chat token. What? You want to chat? Don't worry about it, Andrew. One person is waiting. Hello. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? Good. How are you? <clears throat> are you a new student? No, it's me, Christine. But Christine, yes, Christine. This is my huh, my husband's name. Yes. That's your husband's name. Okay, yes. I was wondering why do I see I'm a different sorry. name up there? I have a different name up there too. I need to change my name. Yeah. Uh, he take uh, um, uh, with the with the level five, and when he go the Zoom, he his name is Christine. So he, his teacher ask. Ask him, what's your name? <laughs> and then he, Christine, there's a way. There's a way you can go up here. H R I S T E E N. Yes. You can go up here and change your name. Um, go up to where you see your name. I change my name. Okay. Go to participants. Yeah. And where it says more, you click on more, mm -hmm. and it'll let you change your name. Yes, good. Yeah, I so see. You can change your name on there and it'll show who you are instead of someone else. Okay, so that was your husband's name. Good. Okay, <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry I'm late this morning. I just realized what time it was. It's okay. <clears throat> Yesterday was my son's birthday. Oh, wow. Happy oh. birthday. <laughs> <laughs> Christine said happy birthday, Andrew. Oh, thank you. She said thank you. He's taken the whole week off from work yeah. to um, celebrate his birthday. Yes. <laughs> okay. All right, we're still in uh, unit two, lesson five. Yes. So we're on page 34 in the big book. Yes. Did we finish the workbook last time, Christine? I think we did, didn't we? Yeah. I didn't do it. Um, okay. Um, yeah, I think we're in the, that's okay. I think we're in the big book. Yes. And, and we're on page 34. Okay. <clears throat> okay, so there's a picture at the top of the page of three redheaded boys. Do you see that? Yes. Um, what do you think? Can you tell me anything about those three boys? They're playing football. They are well, playing. In, <laughs> in our country, we call soccer? that soccer. That's I'm right. Yes, but soccer. most countries, they do call it football. You're exactly right, Christine. Yes. Soccer, yes. But in the United States, we call that soccer because we have American football, which is different. Okay. So in the United States, we call that soccer. So soccer. they're playing. They're playing with a, with soccer balls. Okay. Can you tell me anything else about those three boys? Uh, they are happy. They're happy. Do you think they're related? I'm sorry. Do you think they're related to each other? Do you think they're brothers, maybe uh, or? Friends, yes. brothers, friends, maybe friends, friends or friends or brothers. What might make you think they might be brothers? You think they are brothers? Do you think they are? What would make you think they are? Because the uh, uh, the the look like they others. look alike. They look alike. They look yes. like each other. Yes, they all have red hair. You yes. see that? They all yes. have red hair. They look a little bit alike. So it says they're three brothers. Um, what are other things that family members can have in common? Obviously, these boys all have red hair, right? Yes. They all like to play soccer. Uh -huh. OK, so things that family members have in common. So. Do you have, your children, do they have things that they both like? Uh, uh, 
Maybe. Not really? Maybe. They like very different things? Well, you have a yes. son and a daughter. Yeah. And boys are very different than girls. Yes. So it could be very, very different. Okay, so let's look at um, the next part. It says, look at the pictures of the two neighbors. Mm -hmm. So that's the next picture, and that's two ladies. Yes. Um, their names are Ming and Tina. Mm -hmm. What do you think they're talking about? What are they, can you tell what they're looking at? Maybe they're talking about the family, her family. Oh, yes, what do you think they're looking at? Uh, um, the mother and daughter. Yes. What are they looking at? Uh, looking at the picture. Pictures. They're looking at a photo album. They're looking yeah. at pictures. So they're probably talking about their families, right? Yes. <clears throat> All right, we're going to read through these sentences. Mm -hmm. Tina looks like her sister, and that one's true, so you can circle true. True. Tina looks like her sister. Okay. Tina has a friend named Lily. That's false. False. Her friend is not Lily. I think it's her sister who is Lily. Yes. Tina has a lot in common with her sister. True. Mm -hmm. So Tina and her sister have a lot in common. Tina's sister works in a bank. That's true. Yeah. And it says Tina's sister does not have any children, but that's false. Tina's sister does have children. So that one's false. 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 So the next questions they want you to answer is, does Ming have any sisters? And the answer to that is yes, mm -hmm. she has two sisters. Ming has two sisters, so you want to write yes. Ming has two sisters. And does Ming have any brothers? The answer is no, Ming doesn't have any brothers. <clears throat> so, uh, so yes, she has, uh, and no, she hasn't. Right, that's correct. The answer? That's correct. Yes, Christine, that's exactly right. Okay, let's look over on page 35. On page 35, mm -hmm. we have some sentences. And before we do those, look over in the block on the right. Yeah. The, word, the word do often has a short, weak pronunciation when another word comes after it. Do you sounds like dia, which I've never heard, never heard it said that way, but mm -hmm. do does not have a weak pronunciation at the end of a sentence or before a comma. But when you put it before you, do you have any sisters? Sometimes people shorten that and it doesn't come out yeah. do you. It comes out do you, do you, do you, I don't know. Anyway, it's do you have any sisters? Sometimes do and you get kind of combined into one syllable. Yeah. So this next part says, do you have any sisters? Do you have any sisters? When you ask it in a question, listen to the way that I say it. Do you have any sisters? Yes. So the do and the you yes. kind of go together. Yes. We don't pronounce every single word like, do you have any sisters? We say, do you have any sisters? The do and you comes out kind of like one syllable. Yeah, okay. Do you have any sisters? Yes, I do. Do you have a lot in common? Actually, we do. She works in a bank and I do too. So mm -hmm. I want you to repeat these. Do you have any sisters? Do you have any sisters? Very good. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. Do you have a lot in common? Do you have a lot in common? Actually, we do. Actually, we do. She works in a bank, and so do I. Or, she and I do too. She works in a bank, and I do too. Very good. Okay, we're going to do a listen and repeat again. Mm -hmm. Tina, is this your sister? Tina, is this your sister? You two look alike. You two look alike. Yeah, that's my sister, Lily. Yeah, that's my sister, Lily. Do you have a lot in common? 
Do you have a lot in common? Actually, we do. Actually, we do. She works in a bank. She works in a bank. And I do too. And I do too. And we both have new babies. And we both have new babies. Very good. Now we're going to do the practice at the bottom. And this is one of those where when you see a blue box, you're going to write words out of the blue box at the bottom. Where you mm -hmm. see a green box, you're going to write green words out of the green box at the bottom. Where you see a red blank, you're going to write words out of the red box, okay? So you're going to start out with, Tina, is this your? And then choose a word. Go ahead and write them in. And then after you write them in, then we'll go through those. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh... Tina, is this your uh, niece? Niece? Okay. You and do look alike. Yes, that's my... Uh, you want to use the same word you used in the top one. Ah. Uh, so if you use niece at the top, you're going to say, yes, that's my niece. Yes, yes. Uh, yes, that's my niece, Lily. Very good. Do you, do you have a lot in common? Actually, we do. She works in a... And choose one uh, of those green words. Yeah. In a, a, a restaurant. In a restaurant. And I do too. And we both have two kids. Very good. Very good. And we both have two kids. Very good. So, Tina, is this your niece? You two look alike. And you say, yeah, that's my niece, Lily. Do you mm -hmm. have a lot in common? And you go ahead and read the B part. Yes. Can you read the part that says letter B and I'll read the part that says letter A? Okay. So, Tina, is this your niece? You two look alike. Yeah, that's my niece, Lily. Do you have a lot in common? Actually, we do. She works in a restaurant and I do too. And we both have two kids. Very good, very good. All right, let's turn over to the next page. And we start out with a grammar box. And you know I like grammar boxes yeah. because grammar boxes teach us how to use words in the proper way when we're speaking. Mm -hmm. So the first one is going to be in the affirmative, and I'll read these, and I'd like for you to repeat them after me. Okay. Lily works in a bank, and I do too. Lily works in a bank, and I do too. Lily works in a bank, and you do too. Lily works in a bank, and you, you do too. Lily works in a bank, and we do too. Lily works in a bank, and we do too. Lily works in a bank, and they do too. Lily works in a bank, and they do too. Now we're going to switch to he and she, and now we're going to say it a little differently. Yes. Lily works in a bank, and he does too. Lily works in a bank, and he does too. Lily works in a bank, and she does too. Lily works in a bank and she does too. Now we're going to go over to the negative and now we're going to use not either. Trang doesn't live in Denver and I don't either. Trang doesn't live in Denver and I don't either. Very good. Trang doesn't live in Denver and you don't either. Tang doesn't live in Tanger, uh, Denver, and you don't either. Trang doesn't live in Denver, and we don't either. Trang doesn't live in Denver, and we don't either. Trang doesn't live in Denver, and they don't either. Trang doesn't live in Denver, and they don't either. We Trang Right, that's they don't either. And then we're going to skip down to he and she, and then we're going to say it a okay. little differently. Trang doesn't live in Denver, and he doesn't either. 
train doesn't live in Denver and he doesn't either. Trang doesn't live in Denver and she doesn't either. Trang doesn't live in Denver and she doesn't either. Now the grammar watch down at the bottom, it says use to, T-O-O, -O, for affirmative sentences and use not either for negative sentences. Okay. Use not, okay, and use a comma before to and either. So if you look at the way they wrote these, if they used either, if they put a comma after doesn't or don't and put either. Mm -hmm. And if they used um, do or does, you put a comma after do or does before to. So you're gonna use, if you were writing this in a book or in a, on a paper, you would say do comma to or does comma to or don't comma either or doesn't comma either. The comma shows a slight pause when you're speaking. Mm -hmm. Okay, and they're just showing you how to use a comma when you're using two and either. Okay. <coughs> All right, let's go down to um, practice. Complete the sentences, match the sentence beginnings and endings. Okay. Number one, I speak Farsi and my husband does too. does too. Very good. Letter B. I speak Farsi and my husband does too. Number two, she lives with her parents and her brothers do too. Very good. Her brothers do too. Letter C. So she lives with her parents and her brothers do too. <clears throat> Number three, they don't live in an apartment and we... And we don't either. Very good. And number four, Pablo doesn't work in an office and Ursula... Doesn't either. Very good. Now we go to letter B, complete the sentences, use the words in the box. So we're either gonna use do to, does to, doesn't either or don't either, okay? Okay. So Mark has two nephews and Jason does too. Now you notice they put a comma before the word to. Yes. Number two, they don't work on weekends and we... And we don't either. Very good. Number three, my son doesn't live with me and my daughter. Uh, my daughter does too. Doesn't either. Because we said doesn't, in the negative. Uh, I'm We're, sorry. This yes, is in the negative. Yes. My son doesn't live with me and my daughter doesn't either. Mm -hmm. Number four, my wife works for her father and my brothers-in-law do too. Do too. Very good. When when you see um more than one, it's a plural. If it's in the positive, it'll be do too. If it's in the negative, it will be don't either. Yeah. Yeah. But for one person like he or she, that's when we use does and doesn't. Yeah. Okay, number five, Todd and Micah don't have any children and we and we uh, don't either. Very good. Her sisters-in-law live on Walnut Street and her father-in-law... Uh, <clears throat> sister-in-law uh, uh, does two? Very good, very good, does two. Does comma two. Her sisters-in-law live on Walnut Street and her father-in-law does too. Number seven, I don't have any brothers and Melanie doesn't either. Very good, and Melanie doesn't either. I don't have any brothers and Melanie doesn't either. Number eight, my husband works long hours and I? I do too. Very good. My husband works long hours and I do too. 
Number nine, Marilyn doesn't live in the city and her sisters uh, don't either. Very good, and her sisters don't either. Very good. All right, let's turn over to page 37. And this is practice. Look at the Nash family. And I've shown you the whole family of the Nash family. How are the people similar? What kinds of things can you see that are the same in the people in this family? The same. Can you tell me some things that are the same, similar? Uh, uh, Emily and uh, Douglas have uh, white hair. Okay, yes. Emily and Douglas have gray hair. Gray we, call hair. That, we call that gray. Mine is gray or, or mostly white. Yeah. <laughs> Theirs, no, gray, is more, I'm sorry. <laughs> Theirs is more gray. Yes, okay, gray. so they have gray hair. What about um, Katie and Michelle and Sarah? Uh, what? Sarah and, and who? Katie? Yes. Katie. Katie, yes. the little girl in the red dress, Michelle yes. in the pink shirt, and Sarah in the striped shirt, they all have blonde hair. Blonde hair. Yes. Blonde. They all have blonde hair. Yes. Okay. Anything else? Grace and James have brown hair. Yes. Brad has black hair. But uh, Brian has brown hair too. So wow. Brian and James and Grace all have brown hair. Mm -hmm. And Brad has black hair. Yes. Okay. Yes. So those are some things we see that are similar. Now, if you look at the bottom, it tells you where they live. So Brian and Michelle and Katie and James all live in Tampa. Mm -hmm. Douglas and Emily live in Vancouver. And Sarah and Brad and Grace live in Seattle. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now they want you to write six sentences about the people that you see in this picture and use two and either. So that you, they want you to write this on a separate piece of paper. So whatever you want to write it on, or you can just tell me verbally, but you need to use the words two and either Mm -hmm. So you're going to say things about this family and pick different ones in the family and use the words to and either in sentences. They gave you two sentences there at the bottom. Douglas has gray hair and Emily does too. We already mentioned that, right? Yeah. And then the second one they wrote, they said, Brian doesn't live in Vancouver and Brad doesn't either. Okay, so that was another one they wrote. Mm -hmm. Now you tell me a sentence about this family and use two or either. Okay. So we can say um, Sarah has a blonde hair and Michelle does too. Very good. Did you say Michelle? Yes. So Sarah has Sarah has blonde hair and Michelle does too. Very good. Yes. Sarah has blonde hair and Michelle does too. Very good. Can you yes. think of another, uh, another one? Uh, Emily and Douglas uh, doesn't, sorry, don't, don't live in uh, Saturday. Okay, Seattle. It's, and yes. you wouldn't say, you would say Emily doesn't live in Seattle. Yeah. So Emily does not live in Seattle, and and Queen Douglas doesn't either. And Douglas doesn't either. Very good. So Emily doesn't live in Seattle, Douglas. and yeah. Douglas doesn't either. Okay? okay. Emily doesn't live in Seattle, and Douglas doesn't either. Can mm -hmm. you think of another sentence about them? Um. Uh, um, Brad uh, doesn't have a gray hair, and Michelle doesn't either. 
Okay, so Brian doesn't have gray hair and Michelle doesn't either. Very good. Brian doesn't have gray hair and Michelle doesn't either. Very good. And you could say that um, Brad and Sarah live in Seattle. Hmm. And Grace does too. Yes. So Brian and, I'm sorry, Brad. Yes. Brad and Sarah live in Seattle and Grace does too. Yes. Okay. So you can go on and on about that family and write sentences about them that show things that they do too or that they don't either. Um, you could say Brian has a mustache and Douglas does too. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that's about enough of does and doesn't and to and either. Do you get the hang of that? If you're ever not sure, you can refer back to the grammar box. Grammar boxes really help a lot with understanding the proper way to use these words. And sometimes if you just read them over and over again, it helps you to get your mind to think about the proper way to use those words. All right, let's turn over to your workbook. And we're in the workbook on page 20. Page 20 in the workbook. Yes. Complete the sentences underline the correct words. Now they did the first one for you. Lon works in a Vietnamese restaurant and Trin does too. Mm -hmm. Lon works in a Vietnamese restaurant and Trin does too. So you're going to underline the correct words. Okay. Letter um, number two, I'm sorry. My parents speak French and I, I do, I do too. too. I do too. Yes. And I do too. Myra's fiance has family in Mexico and Myra does too. Does too. Very good. Soon Lee doesn't live in San Francisco and her brother doesn't either. Very good. Her brother doesn't either. <clears throat> Mr. Martinez works at night and his sons do too. Very good. Do too. His sons do too. Very good. Number six, Oscar and Karen don't have a car and their neighbors don't either. Very good. And their neighbors don't either. Our friends don't work downtown and we, we don't either. Very good. And we don't either. I don't live in a big apartment and my coworker uh, doesn't either. Very good. Doesn't either. I don't live in a big apartment and my coworker doesn't either. All right, let's go down to part B. Combine the sentences. Use do to, does to, don't either or doesn't either. Okay. So number one says, Jason and I live in Miami. Our sisters live in Miami. So what they wanted you to do is to combine that into one sentence. Jason and I live in Miami and our sister does too. Yeah. So let's try the next one. Yolanda works for a computer company. Her brother-in-law works for a computer company. How would you combine that into one sentence? Uh, uh, Yolanda works for a computer company and his brother-in-law does too. Very good. Perfect. Yolanda works for a computer company and her brother-in-law does too. Yolanda works for a computer company and her brother-in-law does too. Our parents. Okay. Do you want to try number three? Okay. 
our parents don't live near a park. We don't live near a park. Our parents uh, don't live near a park, uh, and we don't either. Very good. Our parents don't live near a park, and we don't either. Our parents don't live near a park, and we don't either. Uh, number, four. Number, number four, Edward works from eight to five. His daughters work from eight to five. Um, Edward works from eight to five and his daughters do too. Very good. Edward works from eight to five and his daughters do too. Very good. Number five, Henry doesn't have any sisters. I don't have any sisters. Henry doesn't have any sisters, and I don't either. Very good, and I don't either. Henry doesn't have any sisters, and I don't either. Number six. I don't work on Sunday. My husband doesn't work on Sunday. I don't work on Sunday, and my husband doesn't either. Very good, that's perfect. Um, Okay, let's look over on the next page. See in the back of your workbook. In your workbook, you have a CD in the very back? Yes, I have, but I don't have a CD in my computer. Okay, don't worry about it. I'm going to just tell you the answers. You, you do unmute, I don't hear you. I'm sorry, Christine, I muted it to ask my son something. Okay, I'm gonna tell you the answers. Okay. We don't have to listen to it on the computer, but I wanna tell you what the answers are that go in the blanks. Okay. Phil has red hair. Thank you. Here, take this. Phil has red hair. And Ben, what do you think would go there? Uh, it, it does too. Yes, very good. Phil has red hair and Ben does too. Very good, we're using two and either. So Phil has red hair and Ben does too. Mm -hmm. So Phil has red hair and Ben does too. Number two, Phil lives in Las Vegas and Ben does too. Very good, very good, and Ben does too. Phil lives in Las Vegas and Ben does too. Number three, Phil works for a computer company and Ben does too. Very good, Phil works for a computer company and Ben does too. Excuse me just a minute, Christine, my phone is ringing. Fine. Never mind, it was um, a call I didn't want to take anyway. So, all right, we're back on uh, Phil works for a computer company and Ben does too. Number four, Phil's parents don't live in Las Vegas and Ben's parents um, and, and don't either. Very good, very good. Phil's parents don't live in Las Vegas and Ben's parents don't either. Phil's parents live in Ohio and Ben's parents uh, do too. Very good, and Ben's parents do too. Phil's parents live in Ohio and Ben's parents do too. And if you were listening on the CD, I'm sorry, I don't know how I got muted. If you were listening to the CD, it would say that <clears throat> Phil and Ben are brothers. In fact, they're twin brothers. 
So obviously they have the same parents and their parents live in the same place and so do they. And they have the same, they have similar kind of work. So, um, but those are the answers. So did you hear number five? Phil's parents live in Ohio and Ben's parents do too? Yeah. Did you get that one? Okay. That's <clears throat> Let's look down at part D. Look at the five members of the Carlson family. How are the people similar? Complete the sentences. <clears throat> Use the correct verb plus a preposition if needed. And do to, does to, don't either, or doesn't either. So sometimes when you're making a sentence, you'll have to add a preposition and the preposition is a joining word, okay? okay? So the first one, number one says, Carol lives in Atlanta and Alan and Brian do too. So when we used lives, we needed a preposition to go with it. So we would say, Carol lives in Atlanta mm -hmm. and Alan and Brian do too. Okay. So sometimes you have to add an extra word. Do you want to try number two? Yes. Uh... Alan has a curly hair and Carl, I'm sorry, where is Carl? And Carl does too. Very good. Alan has curly hair and Carol does too. Alan has curly hair and Carol does too. Number three, Angela works in a hospital. So you need to add a preposition with yes. works. Well, so Angela works in a hospital and Carol does too. Very good. And Carol does too. But uh, no. What? Uh, but the, the, no. Angela doesn't work in a hospital and Carol doesn't either. Very good. Very good. Angela doesn't, because you have to look at the picture. Angela yes. is a bus driver. Angela doesn't work in a hospital and Carol doesn't either. I said that wrong, didn't I? Angela doesn't work in a hospital and Carol doesn't either. All right, number four, you want to try number four? Yes. Carol and uh, Deborah. Deborah, yes, Deborah. Um, have brown hair. Have because it's plural, so we're going to use have. H a v e. Yes. So Carol and Deborah have brown, brown. hair. And Brian. Brian. Uh, Brian does too. Very good. And Brian does too. Carol and Deborah have brown hair, and Brian does too. Uh, number five. Brian. Brian doesn't have curly hair. Okay. And uh, I'm sorry. And Deborah. Deborah. Doesn't either. Very good. And Deborah doesn't either. It doesn't have or doesn't has. Just okay. Brian doesn't have yes. curly hair. Brian yes. doesn't have curly hair and Deborah doesn't either. You don't have to use have or has again. You're just going to say doesn't either. Yes. Okay. Okay. So Brian doesn't have curly hair and Deborah doesn't either. Yeah. Okay. And number six. Alan. Alan. Mm. Alan has a mustache and Brian does too. Very good. And Brian does too. And Brian does too. Um, number seven, Angela. Uh, Angela doesn't have Very straight good. hair. She doesn't have straight hair. And Angela Alan doesn't have straight hair. And Alan doesn't either. Very good. And Alan 
doesn't either. And Carol? Carol uh, doesn't live in Memphis. Very good. Carol doesn't live in Memphis and Brian. And Brian doesn't either. Very good. And Brian doesn't either. All right, let's go back to the big book. Lesson seven, ask about sending mail. So we're on page 38 in the big book. Ask about sending mail. Yes, it's cool. And it says to match the pictures with words from the box. So they're showing you different pieces of mail mm -hmm. and uh, asking you to describe them. Now, if you look down just below that in exercise B, it shows you pictures of the different kinds of mail. So mm -hmm. if you need help, with the words that go there, you can look down at these pictures and it will help you to explain okay. what types of mail these are. Okay. They did number one for you. Number one is a large envelope. Mm -hmm. So number one is a large envelope. What is number two? Uh, it's a mailing tube. Yes, very good. It's a mailing tube, a mailing tube. Number two is a mailing tube. Number three? A letter. A letter. Number three is a letter. Uh, number four is a postcard. Very good. Number four is a postcard. Number four is a postcard. And number five? Package. Is a package. Very good. So number four is a postcard. Number five is a package. Now they want you to look at the chart, and this is the chart that has the pictures in it. Uh, Miss Elsa, you, you do unmute again. How do I keep getting muted? I'm not, I wonder if my book is hitting it. If you hit the space bar. Oh, I have my book laying on my, I'm so sorry. No okay. I have my book laying on my keyboard. Yeah. And it kept muting me and I'm so sorry. Am, okay. have, did you hear all of that or did I need to do some of that over again? Uh, from the bottom is B. Okay, well we did okay. all of the pictures in exercise A. In okay. exercise B we're going to use this table mm -hmm. and we're going to um, answer these sentences true or false looking at this table. Okay. So the table shows you the different kinds of mail. <clears throat> and how, how much they weigh and how long it takes for them to get where they're going. Okay. <coughs> All right, so let's look at number one. You can send a 30 pound package by priority mail. So let's look at priority mail. Priority mail is the second one on the left. Mm -hmm. And it says you can send 70 pounds or less by priority mail. So can we send a 30 pound package by priority mail? True. True, very good. Number one is true because we can send 70 pounds or less by priority mail. So yes, it's true. You can send a 30 pound package by priority mail. Okay, number two, you can send a letter by express mail. Uh, for, for. That's true. Let's go up to the letter. Yeah. Look at first look at express mail. Number two says to use express mail. So go up to your chart. Yeah. Look at express mail. And in the picture, it shows you a mailing tube, a letter, a large envelope, and a package. So you can send all of those by express mail, okay? Mm -hmm. If it's 70 pounds or less. So you can send a letter by express mail is true. Okay. Number three says you can send a 20 pound package by first class mail. Let's go look at first class mail in the table. Yes. In the table, we can send 13 ounces or less. This says it was a 20 pound package. Yes. So can we send a 20 false. pound package? No, that's false. Very good, that's false. 
You cannot send a 20 pound package by first class mail. So that one's false. Number four, you can send a postcard by parcel post. <laughs> Go look at parcel post, 70 pounds or less. Is there a postcard in that picture? No, it's okay. No, that's false. Very good. That one is false. You cannot send a postcard by parcel post. So that one is false. Number five says it takes three days for an express mail package to arrive. So now we're going to go over and look at the speed. Go to express mail. Yes. How long does it take? One to two days. One to two days. So does it take three days for express mail? No. No. So that one's false. Very good. So that one's false. Number six says it takes two to nine days for a parcel post package to arrive. So let's go to parcel post and see how long it takes. It says two to nine days. Is that what we said? In number six, it says it takes yes. two to nine days for a parcel post package. So that it's one is cool. true. True. Very good. That one is true. Very good. Okay, let's go over to letter D at the top of the next page. Look at the list of extra mailing services, then read what each customer wants. Which mailing service is the best match for each customer? So a certificate of mailing, you get a receipt to show you mailed the items on a certain date. Delivery confirmation, you can find out when your package is delivered. Mm -hmm. Certified mail, you get a receipt to show you, to show you mailed the item and you can find out when the item is delivered and who signs for it. So the cert certified mail, you know, it shows you mailed it and you can find out when it is delivered and who signs for it. Okay, so that's certified mail. The next one is insurance. If your package is lost or damaged, you get your money back up to the amount that you insured it for. Up to the amount that you insured it for. And then registered mail, you get a receipt to show you mailed the item. Your item is both certified and insured. So registered mail gives you certified mail and insured mail at the same time. So registered mail gives you both certified and insured mail. And the last one is COD, which is collect on delivery. Mm -hmm. The person who receives the item pays for the cost of mailing it. So if you don't want to pay the mailing fees, you send it COD. And most post offices do not like to send anything COD. They want their money in the front, on the front end before they sit, take the package. They don't usually want to do COD, okay? It says collect on delivery in my book. Okay, so sir, this the man in the picture underneath says, I want a receipt to show I mailed this letter today and I want to know when the letter arrives, but I don't need insurance. So what's the best kind of mail for him to use? Mm. He wants a receipt. It's a, uh, uh, yeah. He, so he needs a certificate of mailing, right? I'm sorry, what did you say? Certificate of mailing and delivery confirmation. He wants, what kind of mail in this chart do you think he wants to use? Uh, a certificate of mailing? He wants certified mail. Not just a certificate so, of mailing because that would show when he mailed it, but he defined. also wants to know, well, look at, he, he also wants to know when the letter arrives. Yes. Yes, in order right. to know when the letter arrives, he has to have certified mail. Okay. okay, so you have to go down to certified mail. You get a receipt to show you mailed the item and you can find out when the item is delivered and who signs for it. Yeah. So certified mail is what he wants to use. Mm -hmm. well, it tells you under the picture. He wants to use certified mail. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's go look at... Um, the lady, she says, I'm sending a gift to my brother. I want my money back if the package gets lost. Mm. I don't need the package certified. So how is she going to send hers? Insurance. 
Insurance, very good. She wants insurance in case the package does not get to her brother. She wants insurance. <clears throat> okay, let's go down to the bottom. Mm -hmm. And again, they want us to listen to the CD. And I don't have my, I'm going to have to figure out a way to set up my CD so I can play it. Mm -hmm. Listen to a conversation between a customer and a post office clerk and write in the missing words. So I will help you with filling these in. Okay. The customer says, hello, I'd like to mail this package. So in the first blank, you're going to write package. Mm -hmm. I'd like to mail this package. How do you want to send it? How long does parcel post take? And if you look at the chart, it says two to nine days. Okay, I'll send it parcel post. So you're going to write parcel post in that blank. He mm -hmm. wanted to know how long parcel post takes. Cool. And then he says, I'll send it parcel post. Yeah. Then the clerk asks, do you want delivery confirmation or insurance? So delivery confirmation is the second one in the chart at the top. Yeah. Do you want delivery confirmation or insurance? And the customer says, yes, delivery confirmation, please. So he's asking for delivery confirmation. You're going to write that in the last two blanks. Delivery confirmation. He wants to know that it was delivered. Now they're asking you to fill out a customs form. Do you ever send anything to back to Egypt to your family in Egypt? No. No. If you did, you would have to fill out a customs form. So if you go look on page 237 in the back of your book, On page 237 in the back of your book, I'm sorry, 257, 257 in the back of your book. Yes. On page 257 in the back of your book, they're showing you um, a customs declaration form that you would have to fill out if you were sending something a gift or a box and you're sending it to another country, you would have to fill out one of these custom declaration forms. And in it, you would put your um, what a description of what's in the box, how much it weighs and the value in US dollars. So if you were sending him a gift, you'd have to put down how much it weighs and what's the value of it. So if you spent $100 on your gift, then you would want to put $100 in here showing that you spent $100 on the gift, how much it weighs, and then mail it. Mm -hmm. Okay, and if it was a commercial item, if you were a business, you would do it a little bit differently. But then you fill in your, your information, you're the sender, and then who it's going to would be the addressee. The addressee is the person you're sending it to. Okay? Mm -hmm. All right, let's um, go back to our workbook again. In our workbook, we're on page 22. And you'll notice it has a similar chart in the middle of the page to the one we looked at in our big book. And again, we're going we're gonna to write the names of the pictures that we see in exercise A. So the first one is a letter, L-E-T-T-E-R. The first one is a letter. Mm -hmm. If you're not sure what they are, you can go back into your book and yeah. look at um, the pictures in your book on page 38 because on page 38 they spell the words for you so that yeah. might make it a little bit easier to look at the words on page 38 um, to fill in these blanks so number two is a what's it's number mailing two tube. a mailing tube so fill in the blanks and write in a mailing tube um number three large uh, envelope yes a large envelope a large envelope so if you need to look at how to write that it's in your book on page 38 a large envelope number four uh, 
postcard? A postcard. Number four is a postcard, P-O-S-T-C-A-R-D, a postcard. And number five is a package. Package. Very good. And number five is a package. P A C K A G E, a package. Now they want you to look at the charts of some of the post office mailing services. And again, this is very similar to the one in your book. Then read the sentences and correct the information. So they've given you incorrect information. Information in these sentences that is wrong. And we need to fix it and make it right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So it says, number one says you can send a postcard by parcel post. That's wrong. Mm -hmm. You have to cross out parcel post and write first class mail. Mm -hmm. Because that's the only way you can send a postcard is first class mail. Mm -hmm. Number two says it takes two to nine days for an express mail letter to arrive. If you look at express mail, how long does it take for express mail to arrive? Uh, it's one to two days. One to two days. So the days are wrong. So we need to cross out the two to nine days because that's wrong okay. and write one to two days. Okay, so you're going to change that to one to two days. Mm -hmm. Number three, you can send a 90 pound package by priority mail. If you look at priority mail, it tells you how much a package has to weigh. 70 pounds or less. 70 pounds or less. So if you were going to send a 90 pound package, you can't even send it in the mail by any of these. So let's cross out 90 and write 70. The most you can send is a 70 pound package. Number four, you can send a 12 ounce mailing tube by first class mail. First class mail does not allow you to mail a mailing tube. So how are we going to send the mailing tube? It's a, a by first class. It's you can send it either express mail, priority mail, or parcel post. So let's cross out first class mail. Uh, and, write, and, and you're going to send it parcel post or priority mail. Parcel. Parcel post. Okay. Parcel post. You can actually send it by any of those other methods, but not by first class mail. Mm -hmm. Number five says with certified mail, the person you send the item to pays the cost of mailing. Is that true? Mm, no. No. So what kind of mail will we use? If we want them to pay the postage, how do we mail it? Uh, it's a collect on delivery? Yes, collect on delivery, C-O-D. Collect on delivery, C-O-D. And number six says, with delivery confirmation, you get money back if the package is lost. That's not true. What do we need if we want to get our money back? Uh, yes, it's with insurance. Insurance, that's right. If we want to get our money back if the package is lost, we need to use insurance. Insurance. If we want to get our money back if the package is lost, we need insurance. Okay. Letter C um, is asking questions from the CD. And again, I'm not going to use the CD, so I'll give you these answers. Okay. Letter C says, what does the customer want to mail? The customer wants to mail a package. Okay. So it's letter B, a package. The customer wants to mail a package. How does the customer send it? The customer will send it by parcel post. Again, letter B, mm -hmm. they're going to send it by parcel post. And what extra mailing service does the customer want? The customer wants to add delivery confirmation, letter C. So number three, you're going to mark letter C. The customer wants to add delivery confirmation. Now it says read what each customer wants. Look at the mailing services in the charts and determine what are the best services for each customer. So based on what they're asking for, we need to determine which is the best way for them to send their packages. 
And the first one, his name is June. June needs to mail a large envelope. It needs to arrive in three days. Mm -hmm. <coughs> the package weighs 10 ounces. He wants a receipt to show he mailed it. He also wants to know when it was delivered and who signed for it. So what mailing services does he need? You know that it needs to arrive in three days. So that limits it to either prior, pri priority or first class. Those are the only choices, right? Mm -hmm. It's a large envelope and there's a large envelope in both priority and first class. And they both arrive in three days. The package weighs 10 ounces and 10 ounces will qualify for both. He wants a receipt to show he mailed it. And he also wants to know when it was delivered and who signed for it. So we're either going to send it priority or first class mail, right? Yes. You, you can choose either one of those, either priority or first class mail. So pick one of those two. And then you need to add some more things to it. So mm -hmm. what else do we need to add to get a receipt? What do we need to add to get a receipt? It's the certified not, need. Well, okay, it's not just a receipt. He also wants to know when it was delivered and who signed for it. So we're gonna add certified mail because a certificate of mailing does not give us back who signed for it and when it was delivered. If you wanna get who signed for it and when it was delivered, You've got to get certified mail. So you can send it first class or priority mail, but then you need to add that it is a certified mail package so that you get back the information that you want. So it's either first class or priority mail and then add certified mail because you want to know when it was delivered and who signed for it. Okay, let's look at Angela. Angela needs to mail a package the package weighs 25 pounds mm -hmm. and it needs to arrive in three days. Well, to go to three days, we either have to use the priority mail. Well, we can actually use express mail, priority mail, or first class mail to get the three days, right? Yes. But since we need, we have three days, we should probably go to priority or first class. Yes. Um, so you either want to go priority or first class. It weighs 25 pounds. Well, first class, you can't send 25 pounds. So you're going to have to go to priority mail. Yes. In order to send 25 pounds, you're going to have to go to priority mail. So you're going to send it by priority mail. Mm -hmm. It needs to arrive in three days and that qualifies. And she wants to get her money back if the package is lost. So what do we have to add to our priority insurance. mail package? Insurance. Yes. Yes. Insurance. So she, we're going to send the package by priority mail and add insurance. So by priority mail and insurance. Very good. So looking at the mailing services charts that we've had to look at, think about something that you need to mail. How would you mail it? And how do you want to send it? Um, how do you want to send it? And what extra services would you ask for? And you said you don't ever send anything back to Egypt. But if you did want to send a package, how would you send it? How would, what type of mail would you use to send it? And what extra services might you ask for? Um, I, I can uh, uh, use the first class. No, no, it's a priority mail. Priority mail? Yes. Okay. You'd send it by priority mail. Yes. So on your um, type of mail, you would say priority mail. What service would you ask for? It's uh, insurance. No. Uh, okay. You could ask for insurance. insurance. And what else might you ask for? Extra services. You Small. might also ask for a receipt to show it was delivered and who signed for it, right? Yes. So you might ask for certified mail and insurance, right? Okay. Yes. So you'd send it by priority mail and ask for certified mail and insurance so that you would get a receipt that showed you who signed for it and when they got it. And you'd yeah. also use the insurance in case it got lost. Yeah. Usually in this country, we don't really um, ask for insurance very often because 
in this country, we're pretty certain that if we put something in the mail, it's going to get where we're sending it. Um, but if you want to have a receipt, you need to ask for a different service in order to get the receipt. But if you're sending it out of the country, mail in other countries is not always as reliable as mail is in the US. So a lot of people who send packages outside the country will ask for insurance and, and certified mail so that they can get a receipt back saying that it was delivered and who it was delivered to. Because a lot of times in other countries, mail is not as reliable as it is here in the US. Yes. Okay. Okay. All right, that was um, that was lesson eight. We just did, oh, we haven't done the workbook yet. Let's go on and do lesson, oh, lessons eight and nine. Okay, let's go on and do lesson eight in our work, in our big book. So go back to your big book, page 40. Yes. Page 40 in the big book, ask about family members. So mm -hmm. now we're going to ask about family members. Mm -hmm. Do you ever watch game shows on TV, Christine? I'm sorry? Have you ever watched game shows on television? A game uh, show where they're game playing show? a game? No, no. 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 Um, what I used to like to watch is The Price is Right, but there are other game shows that you can watch. A lot of times when I go to take my brother to the doctor, We'll be sitting in the waiting room and they'll have the TV on and we can watch a game show on TV while we're waiting. Yeah. But um, this is a, a game show where they're going to talk about your family. Okay. And it says in the picture, they're your family now. Mm -hmm. So listen to the game show. Well, we're not going to play it on the, um, on the CD. But um, if we were, they would be playing a game show. And Trevor is answering questions about his family, okay? Mm -hmm. okay? So it says match the name and the person's relationship to Trevor. So the first person they're gonna talk about is Anne. And Anne is Trevor's wife, letter D. Mm -hmm. So Anne is Trevor's wife, letter D. The next person they ask about is Paul. Mm -hmm. And Paul is Trevor's mother-in-law's brother, letter C. Mm -hmm. Letter C, his mother-in-law's brother. So Anne is his wife, and Paul is the brother of his mother-in-law. So his mother-in-law would be Anne's mother, and Anne's mother's brother is Paul. So Paul would be letter C, uh, Anne's, uh, Trevor's mother-in-law's brother. Number three, Alex. Alex is letter A. Alex is his brother-in-law. Mm -hmm. So Alex is letter A. Alex is Trevor's brother-in-law. And number four, Danielle is his sister-in-law. Danielle is Trevor's sister-in-law. So Danielle, Danielle would be Anne's sister and Alex would be Anne's brother. So mm -hmm. Danielle is the sister-in-law and Alex is the brother-in-law. Okay? okay? So now let's answer these questions. <clears throat> Where do Trevor's wife's grandparents live? Now we're talking about Anne's grandparents, not her parents, but her grandparents. And they live in San Antonio. So you're gonna circle letter B, they mm -hmm. live in San Antonio. Mm -hmm. Number two, how many sisters does Trevor's mother-in-law have? Trevor's mother-in-law has two sisters. She has two sisters. And what does Trevor's brother-in-law do? What's his job? Trevor's brother-in-law is an accountant. Letter C, he's an accountant. Letter C. And number four, when does Danielle work? She works at night. So it's letter A, Danielle works okay. at night. And they played a game show and gave you all this information through a game show, which can be interesting, I guess. 
Okay, let's turn over to page 41. Look at the pictures. What are some ways that people keep in touch with their family and friends? Mm -hmm. Do you keep in touch with your family in Egypt? Christine, do you yes. ever call, call them? Yes. Do you call or do you Skype or what do you do when you contact I, your family in Egypt? Yeah, I contact by messenger. By messenger? Yes. So you send messages by messenger. Do you ever try to Skype where you can see them and they can see you? Yeah, and I can uh, speak to, to them by messenger and Facebook. Okay, very good. Okay, very good. Okay, so we're going to look at some ways that people communicate and keep in touch. Okay. So, Number one in, the first, phone. In, in the first picture is a call. Yeah. Number one is a call, it's calling on the telephone. So you could just make a phone call and just call on the telephone. Yes. Number two, what is he doing? Uh, it's a write. Right. You can write a letter or a postcard. So you can write. Yes. Number two is write. You can write a letter or a postcard and send it by mail. Number three, what is she doing? She's sending email. She's sending an email. So you look up there and it says email. That's another way you can stay in touch is to send an email. And number four? Is visit. Visit. You can visit. Does your family ever come to the U.S. to visit you? No. No. Have you ever gone back to Egypt to visit them? Yes, I hope. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I hope to visit them. Very good. Very good. So you go back to visit with them. Very good. Okay, so the next part is to listen and repeat the conversation. So I will read this and you repeat after me. Okay. Do you keep in touch with your family? Do you keep in touch with your family? Yeah, I call my parents a lot. Yeah, I call my parents a lot. Really? How often? Really? How often? About once a week. How about you? About once a week. How about you? Do you call your family a lot? Do you call your family a lot? No, not really. I usually just email. No, not really. I usually just email. An email is nice because they can answer it whenever it's convenient for them. If you um, try to call or messenger, you need to know what time it is where they are so that you're not waking them up in the middle of the night. You're calling them at a time when they're awake and you're awake, right? Yes. So sometimes when you are talking to people on the other side of the world, you need to know what time it is there so that you can talk to them at a time that's convenient. Yes. Okay, let's look over at lesson nine. And we start out with a grammar box, and you know I like grammar boxes. Yes. So in the grammar box, <laughs> in the grammar box, they're telling you the correct usage of yes and no questions and answers. Mm -hmm. So we're I'm going to read these, and I want you to repeat after me. Okay. The first one is: Do you visit your family? Do you visit your family? Do they call their parents? Do they call their parents? Does he live near you? Does he live near you? Does she have children? Does she have children? And now the answers are, yes, I do. Yes, I do. Yes, they do. Yes, they do. Yes, he does. Yes, he does. And yes, she does. Yes, she does. No, I don't. No, I don't. No, they don't. No, they don't. No, he doesn't. No, he doesn't. And no, she doesn't. No, she doesn't. Now, before we do this next grammar box, let's look at the grammar watch over to the right. It says, other question words are, how often do you call? How many kids do you have? And which family members live there or live here? Mm -hmm. So those are other questions you can ask. They've asked when, where, and how, but other questions that you can ask are how mm -hmm. often, how many, and which. Mm -hmm. So you repeat after me. When do you visit them? When do you visit them? And the answer would be on holidays. On holidays. 
Where does he live? Where does he live? In Vancouver. In Vancouver. How does she keep in touch? How does she keep in, in touch? By email. By email. Okay, and then I showed you the other questions that you can ask. So complete the questions, underline the correct word, then match the questions and answers. So the first one is, you have any sisters? What goes there? Do you have any sisters, right? Yes. Do you have any sisters? What would be the answer for, do you have any sisters? Yes, I do. Yes, I do. Very good. Letter C. Because I'm asking you, so the answer is always going to be I. <clears throat> Number two says, he visit his family. It's going to be does. Does, yes. Does he visit his family often? Now we're talking about him, so what's going to be the correct answer? Uh, no, he doesn't. Very good. No, he doesn't. No, he doesn't. And number three, does your niece have children? Uh, yes, she does. Very good. Yes, she does. And number four, do your yes. parents work? Uh, yes, we, yes, they do. Very good. Letter A, yes, they do. And number five, do you and your son live in Dallas too? Uh, yes, we do. Yes, we do. Letter B. So do you and your son live in Dallas too? Yes, we do. Okay, let's go down to the bottom, complete the questions, and use the correct form of the words in parentheses. So they've given you words in parentheses, and they want you to put them in the correct form. They did number one for you. Mm -hmm. What do your brothers do? So they're asking about what kind of work they do. What do your brothers do? Okay. okay. Number two says, how often uh, your cousins and their parents, and they want you to use visit. So how would you fill in the blanks for number two? How often? How often uh, does no. your cousin? No. no do, do. Do your, your cousins uh, do? Because yes. it's plural, it's more than one. So it's how often do your cousins, your cousins do visit, 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 their, visit parents. their parents. So how often do your cousins visit their parents? Yes. How often do your cousins visit their parents? Number three, your husband and school. Uh, when, when does your, when does? Your yes. Hus yeah, your husband go to school. Very good. When does your husband go to school? When does your husband go to school? Okay. So maybe he's doing night classes on the computer. They're asking when does your husband go to school? And number four. Uh, how do you keep in touch with your family? How do you keep in touch with your family? How do you keep in touch with your family? Very good. Number five. 